spirit tonight, rebel. Rebel, that's what I hear. Be a rebel. Rebel how? In what way? I hear the windows of heaven open and there's a piping forth of the things of heaven. You will hear songs of rebellion, songs that in inspire rebellion, songs that paint the picture of victory so that the rebel can pursue, knowing that he was not called to worship in vain or to serve God in vain. He said that in Micah, I've not called the children of Jacob to serve me in vain. So rebellion is going to translate into brand new songs. You will hear songs from heaven that are inspired by the Almighty. What will rebellion birth? It will birth new prayers, brand new prayers. Psalm 72 says, and here I ended the prayers of David, the son of Jesse. So you're also going to hear prayers, prayers that are prayed by the Spirit, the heart of God himself unveiled to you. Prayers that would be kickstarters, prayers that would be triggers, that will trigger men into their heritage and their destiny. Prayers that will kickstart races, prayers that when you speak, whole groups of people will just get up and begin to run. Some of you are going to pray prayers in public and prayers in the closet, like John Knox saying, give me Scotland or I die. Those are the kind of prayers that will come. Rebellion is birthed in the air. Rebellion is birthed in the air. Bob Marley sang the song, Redemption Songs is all that I have. But you have much more than that. You have much more than just Redemption Songs. Because your own Redemption Song is anchored upon the blood of Jesus. That eternal sacrifice which was made. And nothing can match it. Nothing comes close to it whatsoever. It is time to rebel. Your thoughts will be reshaped by the words that God is speaking. As you are reading his word, he will receive thoughts on the inside of you. I see his word in your life like pieces of china, broken pieces of glass, shattered pieces everywhere. Because that's how it is when you start getting the word of God. You start receiving it like there is no coordination to it. Continue, persist. A season is going to come when all the pieces will begin to come back together. And when they come together, shape will be formed. Remember the vision of Ezekiel and the valley of dry bones. That at the instruction of God, when the word of God came together, then the pieces of bone began to seek out and find their own bones. Bones to bones, with affinity. The ear bones didn't go to the, uh, to, to the hand bones. And the palm bones didn't go to the feet bones. They all found themselves and yoked themselves up together. God gave them form and continuity. How would you rebel? You will rebel with your creativity. Creative ideas are going to come from you. God gave a vision to Moses. Moses was a stammerer and unable and incapable to communicate the things he saw. If he said blue, he could not tell the shade of blue because he was stammering. But God raised another son, the son of Uri, and he poured out his spirit upon him. And that boy brought out everything that Moses said. When Moses said purple, that boy brought out the exact shade of purple that Moses meant. And Moses just kept concurring until Moses looked and the tabernacle that he saw in the vision given to him was standing right there before him. So also God is going to give you. He will give you as a leader, but he'll also endure men with the spirit and with power. And they'll be able to translate the dreams that you have dreamt into visions that will be prolific on the earth. That's how you are going to rebel. You will rebel by creativity. You will rebel by the looseness of your tongue. Your tongue is going to be set loose. So you will speak the words of God. You will speak them like a painter. And your paintbrush will paint clear pictures in the hearts of the people. You must rebel. You must rebel. You will see visions. You will dream dreams. Rebel and dare to receive those dreams and those visions. Receive them as the outpourings of God. Receive them as the offshoot of the Almighty. This is the season to rebel. This is the season to rebel. In this season as well, he's going to bring the silver. He's going to bring the gold. He said, the silver is mine, the gold is mine. That's what he says. And he's going to use it to propagate his gospel in the earth. He says, by prosperity shall his cities yet spread abroad. And the silver for this task, the gold for this task is his. So you will rebel. You will rebel in the area of giving. You will not become a dam. You will become a river that is freely flowing. You will know that God's purpose for blessing you is not so that you can acquire property, but his purpose for blessing you is so that you can abound unto every good work. You can abound, you can do more in God's work. Friends, a new generation is rising. They are rebelling against their personal pleasure and they are saying, I want to be of service to God and in his kingdom. Bless me so I can push your work from the earth. 
He said he owns the cattle in a thousand years. But if he was hungry, would he knock your door? And it's a legitimate question, my friend. Because God many times is in need. He's the one that spoke, remember, through his son Jesus. He said, when I was naked, you didn't close me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me water. When I was hungry, you didn't give me food. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. Which means many times God's vision is in prison. He gives visions, mighty visions, to weak men, incapable men, and their wives. And they don't have the resources for it. And then he waits for people to recognize that gift and to pursue it and to sponsor it and to drive it. Rebel. That's this the time to rebel. Men are going to rebel. Oh, people are getting upset that churches are, are being built and they are fantastic and beautiful. You have not seen anything. Go and read the givings of David. Go and read the givings of David. He gave five 25-ton uh, tipper loads of gold bars for the building of the temple. Have you ever heard that kind of gift? Not even Bill Gates can give that kind of gift. 25 ton trucks, five of them, David filled them with gold bars. And more than 15 of such with silver. And he said the silver was for the plastering of the house of the Lord. I can only imagine what the temple looked like, my friend. Oh, I'm going to build bigger cathedrals. I'm going to build bigger temples. I'll build bigger places for people to gather. I will build stadia for his people to gather. If that's going to annoy you to blazes, then let it do. But I hope it annoys you and provokes you back into Christ. And not just building physical stadia. Men are going to attempt incredible things in the name of God. A new generation is arising, a rebellious generation whose sole desire is to see the power of God exploded all over the earth. Eight women were listed that supported Jesus financially in this end time. Those women will envy the women of this new day because the women of the new day are going to do everything. They will sacrifice everything to push the kingdom of God to the zenith of its epical move. Oh, you will see young people who will arise and they will defy their youth. They will refuse the pleasure of their time. And they will live like the ancient. They will eat the food of the ancient. Walk with the wisdom of the ancient. And bring down that wisdom, which is the wisdom of God on the earth. Watch out. You've never seen a prayer movement like now. Rebellion is in the air. A generation is rising that will defy curfews and lockdowns. And fill up every city with the sound of prayer. Then victory will be born. Do you know why? The song of the Lord will never come to an end. In the house of the Lord. The sons of God. They will never cease to exist. In the house of the Lord. The praise of Jehovah and Yahweh. Will continually increase. On the face of the earth. No law. No arithmetic. Nothing can aggregate God out of the equation. He is the center of it. And there is nothing you can do about it. Kings will come and queens will go. But his dominion is forever. This is your season to rebel. Rebel against sin. Rebel against lethargy. Rebel against nondescript disposition. Make God the epicenter of your life. Make him the epicenter of your life. Don't make him an also run in your life. Make him the very reason why you live. Give him that primal place, pride of place. It's time to rebel. There's no age that's too young. Children are too will be ready to get things done. I saw a child on the internet beating drums with an orchestra at the age of three. And the dad was carrying the child up and down. Genies are born with superior IQs from when they are one, two, three. Their parents recognize it. We have genies who have gone to Harvard, who have gone to Oxford, and who have graduated and become professors at 16, at 17. Genies at mathematics, genies at chemistry, genies at physics. When will you rebel to be a genie? are the things of God. Now, now is the hour. Don't defy him. Resist the devil and he will flee. But embrace God and he will give grace to the humble. Let's rebel. I'm a rebel and I invite you to join the bandwagon of rebels. The end time is a season of rebels. Jesus himself will defy everything and descend with a shout, with the trump of God and the voice of the archangel. To come and brazenly take his own. Why wouldn't you get ready for it? It's not a figment of anybody's imagination. If everything he said has come to pass, then know it that that one too 
will come to pass. Thank you.